Hello, today we're going to cover Accord Application Training 101. My name is Carly Rahm. I am the marketing representative for Griffin Underwriting. I'll go over a brief little agenda. I'll give you some history about Griffin Underwriting Services, otherwise known as GUS. We'll do an introduction as to why we're offering this webinar. Uh, today we're going to cover Accords 125, 126, 140. We'll touch just briefly on some commercial supplemental applications, our online quoting process, and then with each one of these presentations, I do end with a contact list in case you have any questions. So Griffin Underwriting was founded in 1928. We still are family owned and operated by the Griffin family. Uh, we were one of the first surplus lines brokers in our region to be granted binding authority by Lloyds of London. What does that mean? That means we hold the pen for many different types of products um, and our underwriters are able to get you a quote relatively quickly in the surplus lines world. We have over 30 underwriters and brokers spread throughout three different locations within the Pacific Northwest. We offer solutions for personal lines, commercial lines, transportation, as well as brokerage. We do have an online quoting program featuring single sign-on and 100% automated binding with selected classes of business. When we're talking about commercial policies, the most three, the most three common applications that you'll see are the commercial insurance application, which is the Accord 125, the general liability section, which is the Accord 126, the property section, which is the Accord 140. Some other applications that you might see is the commercial umbrella, which is the Accord 131, business auto, 127, auto coverage, 137, equipment floater, 146, and then there's also a garage liability or garage keepers application. When you're filling out these applications, it doesn't really matter what application we're talking about. Some things to keep in mind, the more information you can pro provide up front, the less information our underwriters are going to come back and ask for you later. Um, we're going to focus on the information that is the minimum information that is required in order to obtain a quote. And then some details that our underwriters can help you with and information that they'll need at a later time in order to bind the policy. Uh, what I like to let agents know is when you're thinking about building your book of business, commercial business usually ends up being a greater premium, which is a greater opportunity for you. We're going to go over some details of each application. We'll go over the basic description, the required sections. I'll give some explanation and some examples. So let's move on to the fun stuff. Let's start with the Accord 125. This is the commercial insurance application. It gives us general information about the applicant, the specific premises, as well as the business operations or description of the business. Um, we need those details. We need to know what your insured is doing as far as what their business entails. Um, we at Griffin Underwriting do not require these Accord applications. It is the carriers that require these applications. I know nobody likes filling them out, but they are that necessary thing that uh, every carrier requires. Uh, as far as the required sections, uh, we'll go over these in detail, but these are the most critical sections. We need the prior insurance, we need the lost history, we need a description of the business and their operations. I have a whole slide dedicated to the business description because I feel this is one of the most important sections. This can tell us a ton about what type of policy that our underwriter is trying to quote for you. We need to know what their products and services are. Who, is, who are their customers? Who's the consumer? Uh, what's their expected revenue and payroll on an annual basis? Uh, what sort of training or experience do they have? How long have they been in business? Are they manufacturing or distributing anything? Have they have any incidental revenue resources? And do they subcontract any of those, uh, any of the work? Or do they have subcontracted employees? Let's take a look at an example of the Accord 125. A little hint, especially for those agents who are relatively new to quoting commercial. If you look down at the bottom of left of any Accord form, you'll be able to tell which form you're looking at. So again, we're looking at the Accord 125. I've highlighted and given descriptions of, or rather examples of what all we need. So let's start at the upper left. We need your agency information. We need all of your agency information, meaning your full name of the agency, the address of your agency, phone number, and your email address. The reason being is, one, the carrier requires it, 
And two, we're lucky enough to work with agents nationwide. There is a pretty good chance that there's more than one agency that has a similar or same name. We want to be sure that we're keeping everything according to which agent submitted it. So your complete information is very important. We also need to know, moving a little bit to the right, uh, what you would like us to quote. For this example, we're choosing commercial general liability as well as commercial property. Right away, that tells the, the underwriter that they should expect a completed 125, 126, and 140 Accord applications. Scooting down, applicant information. This is something really important to point out. If the name of the business, if there's a DBA, we need the full name. So uh, for this example, Chris Columbus doing business as Chris, or Columbus Industries. If the agent were to just put Chris Columbus or Columbus Industries, that wouldn't suffice. We need the full DBA name. So make sure you're checking with your insured. Uh, if the name of the business is a DBA, get that full name. A PO box is perfectly fine for mailing address, but we do need a physical address for the premises information. So for this example, we put a PO box number for the mailing address. I have put a phone number in here. Uh, we don't have direct contact with the insured uh, under any circumstance, but it is nice to have it in case. We have had uh, agents call in the past um, when it comes time for renewal. Uh, they actually call us to see if we have a phone number for the insured. So if you provide it up front, we'll be able to give it to you later. Again, we don't contact the insured, but back to this, the main point, the more information up front, the better. Moving down for the premises information, location one, building one, what that tells our underwriters are how many different locations or how many different buildings to expect for this quote. Uh, we need to know if it's inside or outside the city limits, if it's owner or tenant occupied and the year it was built. Down at the bottom of the first page of the Accord 125, this is, I would argue, one of the most important sections of this application. This is the business description. So as you can see, this is a pretty small paragraph, but it gives a whole lot of information. Remember, we want the what, we want the why, we want the customer, we want the uh, projected revenue, we want a bunch of details. So location one, sales, installation, and manufacturing of custom fiberglass swimming pools. This insured has 25 years experience building pools. They, special, they are specialists in ceramic and fiberglass composites. They're a member association of pool and spa professionals. The applications for both residential and commercial use. The insured is being non-renewed for prior claims with a projected sales of 750,000 and a payroll of 220. This tells us the experience, who the customer is, are they manufacturing anything? Um, is it commercial or residential? Uh, their experience or their the member association of pool and spa professionals and their projected sales. You don't have to list pages and pages of description, just need to be concise. Page two, as you can see, there's really not much we need on here at all. I will point out that down at the bottom of page one or page two of the Accord 125, there is a section for the applicant's signature as well as their producer's signature. Uh, it is important to note we do not need applications, or excuse me, we do not need signatures to quote. We absolutely need signatures to bind. So keep that in mind when you're having the insured fill out the application or if you're filling out the application for the insured, you will need to get those signatures. And then page three, as we discussed in uh, the description, uh, I think the example I gave was the insured was being non-renewed. So we know as the underwriters that there needs to be prior carrier information. It is perfectly fine if you're dealing with someone who is new in business and they don't have any prior coverage. What I would suggest is putting NA or not applicable in this section rather than just leave it blank. Uh, by putting NA, it's indicating they don't have any prior coverage if you just leave it blank, maybe it won't be clear as to whether or not they maybe did have prior coverage, maybe they don't. So again, just being thorough with uh, information. And then down at the bottom, lost history, if any. Uh, in the description, we said they were being non-renewed due to prior losses. So here you're gonna list the lost history. Again, if there's no lost history, you can just go ahead and put NA. So this is page three of three of the Accord 125. When we're talking about the Accord 126, this is a commercial general liability section. It gives us specific information about the business operations. Uh, 
It lists the coverage limits, a schedule of hazards, completed operations, as well as additional insurance, if any. Um, we do need this. They are required to bind commercial general liability. So if you, the agent, are just trying to get a quote for commercial general liability, we need the completed accord forms 125 as well as the 126. We need to know those coverage limits. We need to know a schedule of hazards, and we need to know if there's any additional insurance. Uh, as far as coverage, coverage limits go, we need to know if you would like a quote based off of a claims made or occurrence base. Commonly, we see commercial general liability on an occurrence base. You can choose BI or PD deductibles. Common deductibles that we see are 500 or 1,000. And then we uh, need to know what limits. Uh, if you're unsure about the limits uh, and the insured has prior coverage, look at their current declaration page or their past declaration, but have that conversation. Make sure that you're getting a quote for enough uh, coverage for your insured. If you have questions, we can have that conversation. Legally, our underwriters cannot tell you how much coverage your client needs, but we can definitely have an open discussion to, to help find what that limit should be. As far as schedule hazards go, uh, we need to know uh, sales and receipts. So if they have widget sales, food sales, liquor sales, we need to know that. Uh, you also need to identify payroll, uh, welding, manufacturing, excavation. These are just examples. And then we just uh, designate payroll to sales with either a P or an S. So let's take a look at an example. Again, bottom left, you're looking at the Accord 126. Up at the top left, your producer information, your agency information. I know a lot of this, you're gonna think, well, gosh, I just put this on the Accord 125. Why do I have to list it again? Because the carriers require it. So your complete agency information Slightly over to the right, the complete information, complete name for the insured, effective dates. This just tells our underwriters what the term you're looking for and when it should start. Here's that coverage, either occurrence or claims made. Again, we said that typically it's occurrence with some deductibles. If you're not sure what the deductibles should be, it is okay to leave that blank, but if you have an idea, please list them. And then here are those limits. Quite often we see one million with a two million aggregate and that's it. That's perfectly acceptable, but you can put sublimits like each occurrence, fire damage, medical expenses, etc. So you can be as detailed with this as possible. About halfway down the page, here's those schedule of hazards. So we're still talking about our pool manufacturer who does installation. Uh, so his projected sales are 750,000. We listed that on the Accord 125 already. But as far as installation, we want to make sure that there's uh, scheduled payroll. So these last three are the scheduled payroll. Remember, S is for sales, P is for payroll. So we've got pool installation at 45,000. He has some subcontracted work at 65,000. And then some payroll for uh, fiberglass pool manufacturing set at, at 110,000. Moving on to page two of the Accord 126. This is just a two-page application. Here's where you would put the additional insureds. This is just an example. If there are no additional insureds, again, just put NA rather than leave something blank. All right, moving on to the Accord 140. This is the application that one would use if they wanted to get uh, commercial property quoted. If you do not need commercial property, you do not have to fill this application out. If you would just like a quote for commercial property, you're gonna need that Accord 126 and Accord 140. If you would like commercial general liability and commercial property, you need all three Accord applications. So the Accord 140, this is the property section. Uh, we need specific information for the premises as well as the business personal property, otherwise known as BPP. Uh, we need to know the coverages, we need to know the limits. There are a couple of underwriting questions. Uh, what's nice about this application, it's one page per building. So if you only have one building, you just have one page. As I said, the required sections. We do need the premises information. Uh, we need the subject, the amount, the co-insurance, valuation, deductibles, etc. And then we need the structural underwriting, meaning what type of building is it? What construction type is it? What protection class is it in? We do need the subject of insurance, i.e. the coverages. So it's commonly, like I said, it's either the building or the business uh, personal property, the BPP. This can include business income. Um, just for those, just a little refresher, the BPP, this can include furniture, machinery, raw materials, stocks, goods, um, you name it. We need to know the limits. We need to know the valuation, if you would like a quote for replacement costs or actual cash value. 
And then we need to know the cause of loss, either basic, broad, or special. Let's take a quick look at an example. So this is what an Accord 140 looks like. Again, starting at the top left, we need that agency information. I know you've put it on the other applications, but the carrier requires these. We need the full name of the insured, the effective date, and then the premises information. Now for this example, I listed all three, the building, the BPP, as well as business income. It could just be the building. It could be the building and business personal property. It doesn't have to be all three. It's really dependent on what your insured needs. We're going for the specific amounts with an 80% coinsurance. Uh, this example, we're hoping to get a quote for replacement costs on a special form with a $500 deductible. That halfway down, this honestly is the section that gets neglected, I would say the most, especially on this application. We need to know the construction type. For this example, we're using frame. It's in a protection class three. There are two stories built in 1986 with a total square feet of 650,000. Uh, the wiring, so we know the building was built in 1986. Plumbing, heating, and wiring. Putting 1986, that indicates to our underwriters that it has all original plumbing, heating, and wiring. There are no updates. However, in 2009, it looks like there was a new roof put on. So that, that tells our underwriters there's been some upgrades for the roof. There is a central monitoring system for bur burglary alarms, and then there is a sprinkler system. Quite often, carriers will give credits for both of these, so don't neglect to put this on the application if the property has these. Um, one thing that I also want to point out that is not on this example is let us know what the building is used for. Is it a shop? Is it a warehouse? Is it um, a, a seating area for diners? Is it a mechanic shop? Is it where, you know, for this example, as uh, our gentleman who owns the pool company, is this building where he has clients come in and look and looks at a showroom? where they can sit down and design their pool? Or is this a place where he's manufacturing the fiberglass pieces? We need to know what the building is used for. Here's an example of a blank, unannotated Accord 140. Remember how I said if there's more than one building, there's gonna be one page for each building. So this is what it looks like completely blank. It's exactly the same as the previous example. You just gotta fill out the information. Okay, I did mention that there are supplemental applications that are required from carriers depending on the type of risk. This is a short list of some of those that we see quite often. Um, if you are unsure if there is a supplemental application that's required or you're not sure which one, by all means, please reach out to us. We're happy to send you the applications uh, that are needed. But here, again, here's a short list of some of the most common ones that we see. Uh, general contractors, landscaping, janitorial, special events, roofers, um, apartments, daycares, that sort of thing. Again, we're here to help if you need any help whatsoever. A lot of our applications, most of our applications actually can be found on our website, www.gogus.com. There are some risks that can be quoted online or over the phone. It's the exact same platform. You're gonna log in to our website using your agency ID uh, and password. You're gonna go up to the top. There's internet quoting, it's a drop down menu. You're gonna choose commercial. And then there's a list of certain risks that can be quoted online or over the phone. If you don't see what you're looking for, that typically means we need paper applications. If you'd rather speak directly to an underwriter to get that quote, you can call this number, 888-875-5219. If you have any questions, if we can help you at all, if you're just unsure, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Uh, here's that list of contacts that I promised. For all state agents, we do have a dedicated team of individuals ready to help you. You can email them at csr.gogus.com or call 844-859-1766. For those independent or non-all state agents, info at gogus.com. You can call us directly at 800-562-8095. Uh, if you have those applications ready to go, uh, ready filled out and would like a quote, scan them in and email them over to submissions at gogust.com. That goes to our processing department. We'll get it input into our system, assigned to an underwriter, and start working on that quote for you. Again, my name is Carly Rahm. I'm the marketing representative. I want to thank everybody for taking the time to go through this tutorial with me. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to me directly as well. Thank you, everyone, and have a fantastic day.